people look at stories through different lenses. I have my own take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to a brand new episode of In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax and Scene TV. Well, the Reggae Boys earlier last month escaped with a hard-fought 2-1 win over Honduras in the CONCACAF Nations League Group B game in Tegucigalpa. Well, a second-half penalty from Mikel Antonio secured the win, the first of the Steve McLaren era. For the Jamaicans, which saw them climb to a tie on four points at the top of the group with Nicaragua. Today, I'm so pleased to be chatting with reggae boy Dexter Lembekisa. Dexter, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Um, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And when next do we see you here in Jamaica? Um, so this, the camp will start on the 6th. So we'll get there on the 6th and then start training on the 7th. So, yeah. All right, looking forward to, of course, being there at the training and seeing you and the rest of the team do their thing. Well, we have so much to discuss today, but I think I'll start with the 2-1 win versus Honduras that took place in Honduras. How important, Dexter, was this win for the entire Reggae Boy setup? Yeah, um, it was very important, of course, going away to places like Honduras and getting points. Is, is always going to be hard because of the, the team we're playing and of course the hostile atmosphere with the fans and being away from home so it was very important to go there and get and get free, the three points so it was good from us. And what did the players do differently versus Honduras to get the win as opposed to when you played Cuba at home? You had so many chances Dexter but the reggae boys only managed a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was it was a tight game. Um, it was an intense game, and I think that we just managed to be more clinical in 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 their box, and um, we showed like uh, a good a good spirit to get forward and then go and finish those chances and make sure that we were getting them goals um, and and get the three points. Yeah, and for you, how was it playing at home in Jamaica? Personally, I was thrilled to see the massive fan turnout. This stadium was filled to capacity, so that made me very happy. But how did you feel? Yeah, of course, playing at the National Stadium is always an honour. And to see those many, that many fans from, from your country to come out and support you, it's always amazing, you know. We, we, we always need support from the fans, and, and it's good that they, they came out and they were able to support. Jamaica Reggae Boys, you have a fairly new head coach. That's Steve McLaren. His CV, it speaks for itself. But how has the first few matches with Steve at the helm been for you? Yeah, um, even training and the matches, it's been enjoyable. Um, he's, he's, he's coming with energy. He's brought energy to the squad and, and the boys really like him. And he's, he's, we're really starting to gel well the new coaching staff and the manager and his style of play. Um, I like his style of play with having the ball and having more control over the game. So I think it's it's good and it'll be good. Yeah. And what are some of the plans as the team gets prepared to play the remaining matches? Um, of course, to get the three points, to get wins, um, to compete always. And um, I'd say implementing that that um, control in the games that we have, that we have, we, we've lacked previously. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that. Right. And, you know, earlier in March, the headlines read Michael Hector and Dexter Limbekisa, both named in CONCACAF Nations League Finals Best Eleven. When you saw that and you received the news, what did that mean to you to achieve such a feat with your team? Yeah, um, obviously, we, we, we could have went further in that tournament, but it was a good... Um, it's always a good feeling when you're recognised, when you're playing well in, in these type of tournaments, especially on the international level. So it was a good feeling for me, but I knew and the team knew that we could have gone further in that competition and we were able to do that 
in this 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 time round. So, yeah. Right, and you know, Dexter, one of the things about success and sport, people usually see the final product, right? Nobody ever sees the work and the sacrifices that the athletes make. Uh, can you tell me a bit about the hurdles that you have crossed to reach this point in your journey? Mm. Um, yeah, obviously, every day is hard work. You can't really have a, a day off when you're at training. You you want to bring your best to the training. You want to improve as much as you can. So it's a lot of dedication and hard work. And obviously, there's minor injuries, major injuries within within the game. But you have to keep going and and and, and get through it to the other side. But, um, yeah, as well as not playing and and not starting. You like everyone plays a role. In the team so you sometimes you've got to get over that and just continue to have resilience and play play the best you can improve them improve as much as you can and be ready when you need it so there's a there's a lot there's a lot to it before the the success yeah and news recently broke that you're now signed for a team in the swiss super league can you talk to me about the move the team how did that come about how excited are you maybe what are some of your plans for this competition mm -hmm. yeah so obviously um, i'm always excited to go out and, and and play and get experience in in top leagues and this was another opportunity for me to do so um with it being in another country as well uh outside the uk it's a it's a it's a bigger step for me and i think you'll it will do me well, but I'm excited to continue to play. The start, the start of the season wasn't as I as I wanted it to be, but I know that um, it's a long season and I have time to to gel with the team and and, and continue to play and, and improve the season and play as much games as possible. You know. And what were your initial reactions when you joined the team? Did you feel welcome? Are you having a good time so far? What's it like? <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. With it being a, a new country, sometimes it can be um, yeah, a bit challenging. And I'm, I'm learning French as well, so that's another good thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling excited. So Dexter, we spoke about all the aspects of your professional life, but I want to talk a bit now uh, on a personal note. What's your connection to Jamaica? I know your mom is Jamaican, but playing for Jamaica, was that always on the cards for you? Um. I'd say it was always on the cards for me to play international football, whether that was England, Congo, Jamaica. But Jamaica was was eager to to welcome me and 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 allow me to play. So I chose Jamaica as well. And it's a wonderful country with wonderful people. So uh, it's a good it's a good um, it's a good choice that I made. And 20 caps for Jamaica, just 20 years old. Was it a tough decision choosing to play? And has it? how has it been for you? I mean, you've been representing, you've been doing well, you've been making the headlines, but was it exactly what you thought it would be like? Um, yeah, it wasn't so tough. Of course, when you get the chance to play for your country at a young age, it's, just, it's an honour, you know? And... Um, it's been it's been what I've expected. It's, it's always harder playing internationally. It's a, it's a tough level, and I've definitely enjoyed it. You know, so um, yeah, I've been I've been enjoying it so far. You know, it's different as well than playing to club football. Um, so it's like a new it's a new step as well, like playing internationally. Yeah, and you started playing football at 13 at Wolves Youth Academy. Firstly, how important was that in your development? And when did you realize that you wanted to pursue football as a profession? Mm -hmm. Yeah, joining Wolves was, was very important. Of course, you go to the training ground, you train every day, and it's a professional environment from, from early ages. So it gets you ready for what the, the football world is going to be like a bit. So it was definitely important. And I, I'd say from when I was signing for Wolves, or just before signing for Wolves, um, leading up to the to signing for Wolves, I knew I wanted to be a professional footballer. At 13? Yeah, 100%. I knew, I knew that I didn't want to do anything else, really. And nothing really interested me as much as football did. Have you ever played any other sport apart from football, or you just knew it was football? No, just football. I did run a lot and sprint a lot when I was younger, as, as most kids do, but uh, football was really the sport that drew me in, so, yeah. yeah. 
and this has of course been fulfilling now this one is very important to me what advice would you give to a young aspiring footballer who are maybe having doubts about taking up the sport professionally if you if you love playing the sport continue playing it and and just work hard at it and believe in yourself when you're playing football as well for me personally my trust in jesus has been massive as well so having a relationship with god does does wonders when you're in the, the world of football which can be a lot of stress um but i'd say if if you really want to pursue it if you love playing the sport then 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 go for it and and work as hard as you can at it yeah very important to have that grounding dexter Anything you want to say to the Jamaica Reggae Boys fans who will be turning up at Sabina Park for the next home match? Yes, please continue to support us, continue to help us because you guys are needed. And thank you for, for always coming and supporting us and pushing the team on. It's now time for my favorite part of today's interview. It's what we call here rapid fire time. So, Dexter, I'll ask you a question and you say the first word or phrase that comes to mind. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Ready. <laughs> All right, you got to be sharp with this one. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Favorite goal that you scored? Uh, Jamaica against Panama. <laughs> Curry chicken or curried goat? Someone told me you're a foodie. Curry goat. <laughs> <laughs> now the toughest opponent that you faced so far? Uh, Alfonso Davis. TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. One thing you cannot live without? Bible. Good. Very, very good answer. Now, which one of your teammates has the best fashion sense? Corey Anderson. <laughs> now, what's your favorite English Premier League team? Uh, Wolves. Now, describe the Reggae Boys team in one word. Brilliant. <laughs> one country you would love to visit? Uh, Dubai. Yeah, that's mine as well. Now, you were super, super sharp. Let's head across to social media to see what they've been saying about you. Let's see. So the Law Abiding Citizen says last night was the best I've seen the Reggae Boys play. It's encouraging. This was on September of 2024. Do you remember what happened and what is this viewer saying? I do not remember. I'm not huh? very good at dates. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about the matches that you would have played in the CONCACAF Nations League. Uh, for them, they felt as if it was the best they've seen the Reggae Boys play. What do you have to say to that? Do you think you're seeing improvement? 100%, I think, game by game, tournament by tournament, we're slowly okay. improving. So thank you, Law Biders. <laughs> Good to hear that. Cheers. Now let's take another one. This one is from Mills, right, Dexter? He says, so proud to see the Yad, top of Group B on the table. The new boss, McLaren, got them reggae boys looking strong for a deep run in the league. We need to build on the third place finish in 2024. Jamaica is going to be a contender for the title this cycle. Jam Rock, stand up. Anything you want to say to Mills? This is a good one, Dexter. We're, we're definitely contenders for the title, so I believe, I believe that's true. Yeah, I have to agree. And now the Minister of Sports and Youth Development in Jamaica, the Honourable Olivia Babsy Grange, she said congratulations to the Reggae Boys in their 2-1 victory over Honduras in the CONCACAF Nations League. A special praise to the captain and the goalkeeper, Andrew Blake, who made spectacular saves to help Jamaica maintain the lead in the match. So I'll ask you to comment on what she said about Andrew Blake and how has your time been working alongside Andrew Blake? Yes, of course, in the game you saw he was, he was great for us, you know. He kept us, he kept us in the game and in the dire moments, he helped us get the three points. Uh, a leader figure in the team, um, so it's always good to be to be under someone with experience like that as well. Yeah. Well, Dexter, I want to thank you so much. I know it's very, very late where you are. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's show. And I really look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you very much for having me. 
All right, folks. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode of In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know what you enjoyed most about today's interview with Dexter. And do you think the Reggae Boys can win the next one for the Reggae Boys fans? Well, I'm wishing you goodbye for now and I'll see you really, really soon.